welcome to Super Bale Sews. My name's Sarah. Thanks for joining me today. It's another Friday Sews video. Um, last year I took part in Vlogmas, so I know your um, feed will be full of Vlogmas videos at the moment. Um, I decided not to take part this year just because um, I really enjoyed it last year. But as most of you will know, I'm a musician for my job and it's a really busy time of year. Um, and yeah, this year I just felt like I want to just focus on work and I just want to chill out. And I don't know how much sewing I'm going to get done, so I just thought it was easier to not do that. And instead, I'll just make my normal sort of vlogs um, and hopefully that will be of interest to you rather than me trying to fill time and, you know, recording three minute videos late at night and things like that. Um, but I've got lots to talk to you about today. So, first of all, you will see behind me, it's the peony dress. I did it, guys. I did it. Um, we went on a real journey with this last weekend. It's actually fairly easy to put together. Um, I'm very keen on the pattern overall, and I love the fabric, but I did have a bit of a nightmare with it. So, first of all, let me show you a finished picture of me wearing this at my new goddaughter's christening, which was last weekend. Um, I was literally hemming this on the morning of the christening, so it really was a last minute make. Um, it is the Fabric Godmother Peony dress, and it is a, this is a Fabric Godmother exclusive fabric. It is a viscose jacquard in a lovely emerald colour. Um, where do I start? So I'll start from the beginning. Fitting is the main thing uh, that had come up when I was speaking with other plus size people who had made this. There are no, they didn't take any professional photos of plus size people in this dress. So none of the pictures on the Fabric on Mother website show anyone who is bigger, like wearing it. Um, and a few people have made it, but not loads. And I think that's partly because it's a bit nerve wracking to make something in a woven fabric. It's not super fitted, but it's like fitted enough. Um, if you have no idea how that is gonna look on your body type. Um, so the thing I was hearing a lot was that you have to do a twirl and some people did multiple twirls and the fitting can be quite complicated. Now I did do a twirl of the bodice um, and even before I cut the twirl out, I made a couple of small changes so I graded between sizes for the bust the waist and the hips and then I also did a bust adjustment so I did a three inch bust adjustment now this is the other thing with the peony dress a lot of other dresses you get that have an extended size range will have two blocks because obviously like bigger bodies are often like the shapes change you can't just keep getting bigger and bigger um I believe all of the peony dresses are drafted to a b cup um, so I did a three inch bust adjustment, pretty straightforward, and I graded between sizes and I was really happy with the fit of that. Um, I wasn't expecting to be so pleased with it, but, um, yeah, I, I just did that. I did that for the 12 bodice and I was like, that's a good fit. That was it. So then I cut out my main fabric. Um, there are, having finished the dress now, there are some tweaks I might make to the fit of the sleeves, for example, um, but everything else I felt fit quite well. And with the sleeves, I'm not sure what was down to fabric choice. Um, so let me talk to you a bit about the fabric. So as I said, this is a viscose jacquard. It's actually a really interesting texture. It almost feels like, like woolly underneath, like a sort of coating fabric or something. Um, and it was actually really warm to wear. It's sturdier. I know it looks sort of like a satiny type fabric, but it's a lot sturdier than that in terms of like the weight of the fabric. The thing that's difficult with this fabric is it frays to high heaven. Okay, it frays. If you look at it wrong, frays. If you breathe in its direction, frays. It just really frays. Um, and I was managing this just fine until... Um, I basically, I put the zip in at the back and then I sewn up the centre back seam. Um, and there was like a bump, like an uneven part in where the seams were matching. And so I was like, I'm gonna unpick it. And so again, and I unpicked it and it just disintegrated, like fell apart. And I got to a point where I didn't have enough fabric left to cut the skirt back skirt piece out again. 
but also the way it's constructed, instead of constructing the bodice and then the skirt, you construct like the whole front panel and then the back panel and then this back panel. And I'd just already done a lot of work and I was like, and if I unpick, then the bodice, the bottom of the bodice will fray and this bit will fray and I'll end up having to recut everything. Um, but equally it frayed so much that I couldn't then stitch it together without there being these big drag marks at the back. So, um, yeah, I was not thrilled because the rest of the dress I thought was looking really nice. I even finished it with French seams because I wanted it to look neat. Um, and it just like fell apart at that moment. So I left it overnight and I came back with, <laughs> it's not a very neat solution. And it is something that I might come back to when I have more time and if I buy more fabric. But basically I added in from the bottom of the zip, there's like a wedge that goes down to the bottom. So it's like an extra slim panel at the back um, because that meant that I didn't have to pull the skirt in so the skirt was all bunched at the back, but um, it equally meant that I could sort of cut a bit of the fray off and I get, and to be honest, I mean, I don't think it looks good, but most people I don't think would look close enough to notice. And was the other option that I potentially make it worse by unpicking more or that I just don't wear it and I've got this beautiful fabric and the rest of the dress is so nice and that I just throw it away for one little bit at the back. So, and it is right, at, it's at the back, low down. So anyway, so I did fix it and it was wearable and I loved wearing it. I felt really good in it. Um, but yes, this fabric, if you are working with it, because I know a lot of people have bought it, just be careful. You want to avoid having to use the unpicker altogether. So just think twice before you sew anything to avoid having to use the unpicker. Um, but yeah, overall, absolutely gorgeous dress. Do not be afraid of um, making this if you're plus size. The fit is fine as long as, like I thought it was gonna be much more complicated. I found once I'd done the grading and the bust adjustment, which it was a large bust adjustment I had to do, but they're not unusual adjustments for me to have to make even on patterns that are drafted for a plus size body. Um, I felt like the fit was really good and I'm looking forward to making it in something like a bit more daytime. So a cotton, maybe cotton lawn, something like that, or maybe a viscose, just something that's a bit less, because this is obviously a special occasion dress. Um, there are some nice features with the fit. So it has a bust and a waist dart. Um, you also in the back, and if you can see this, have shoulder darts which I've never done shoulder darts before and there are waist darts at the back as well here's my not invisible zip um and then the sleeves you've got this nice little rough inside um which gives it a little bit just subtle poof the shoulders there um and the one other change I made please uh it obviously needs a wash and an iron I haven't washed or ironed it since I wore it so it's got creases in um but the only other change I made was the ruffle on the sleeves. Um, I decided to half the, so I cut it out at normal depth, but then instead of just having it as a single ruffle, I folded it over and sewed it on so that you don't get that flash of the underside of the fabric. Um, and it's just, it just gives you a slightly shorter ruffle, but it just means you don't get that flash of the other side. So that's what I decided to do. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I am really excited actually to make more, as I said. I have had a slight change of plan, which I'm going to talk to you about later in the video. Um, I'm gonna talk about some of my planned makes. Um, some things have changed, some things are the same, um, but I was going to use some fabric to make another peony dress, and now I'm gonna use it for something else. But I have other peony plans. So anyway, so that's what I've sewn this week. Feel quite chuffed with that, to be honest. We got through it, guys. Um, so if you have any interest in seeing any more of the process on my Instagram channel, I have a highlight for this dress. I sort of went along in my stories documenting it because there are a few people who don't really watch YouTube who I think have said, oh, you don't do sort of things on your video, on your stories anymore. So I just thought I'd do that. Um, so there's more details there if you would like to see them. Um, yeah. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to say is if you are my mum or my husband 
switch this video off now. I'm going to talk about gifts and I don't want you to know about them. So please switch the video off. I'm going to give you three, two, one. Good. Okay. So what am I planning to sew for uh, the remainder of the time between now and Christmas? Uh, so some things you know about already. As always, priorities shift. This wasn't on my autumn plans list and then it shot up there. Um, some things you already know about. So my Nova coat that I'm doing as a collab with um, Ruan at the Yorkshire Sew Girl. Um, yeah, that is on the list. I think we, we're looking to do that for January. Um, I'm also doing a collab with Tamlin, um, sewn on the Tyne. And that's going to be the Blair skirt, the True Bias skirt, which I bought recently. And I believe Tamlin also bought recently. So I think that will probably be in the new year as well. So sitting down to think, what am I going to be sewing between now and the end of the year? I would like to sew the Porsche dress, um, which is the sew over it pattern. I showed you before this, my neutral gold fabric. <laughs> um, so that's quite Christmassy. So I would like to get that sewn up. That's fairly high priority. Um, and then I've been thinking about some gifts. I wasn't going to sew loads of gifts and I'm only sewing, it's like a couple, but I thought I would tell you about it anyway. So, um, for Nathan, I did buy him this corduroy and he said he wanted me to make him dungarees. I am eventually going to make him dungarees, but it's just too, because I don't think I'm going to be able to find a pattern that's going to be a perfect fit. I think it's going to be too involved for where my headspace is at at the moment, just because work is, I'm doing carol services all the time. I am like working really, really long days. I just don't have the head. I just want to say things that are easy. Do you know what I mean? So for Christmas, I've decided I'm going to make him an Udi, an Udi, Udi, Udi. Um, there is a free pattern, which I will detail down below. Um, and it's basically a really, really oversized blanket hoodie thing. Um, he loves to be snuggly. He does. Um, our house that we're currently not living in could get very, very cold. It's like an old, it's from like 1900. So it's like, it's a small house, like a very small house, but it's, um, yeah, it just can get very chilly. Um, and I thought this is something that he can just sort of wear in the house. And the really fun thing, so there's a free tutorial to make it and they recommend, so it's designed for uh, like a fleece layer and then like a Sherpa lining, but she recommended getting a king size or a super king size blanket that you can get for not so much money and then just sewing it as one piece rather than layering the two together which is what she did for the sample so I have brought I've ordered um one for Nathan which is navy on the outside and then it's got like normal sort of beige sherpa fleece on the inside and then one for me that's burgundy so I'm planning on making us like his and hers oody oody why can I not say it um I said oody to one of my students the other day and they were like oody so it's an hoodie. I need to remind myself. Um, but basically, it's just a really oversized hoodie. It has a big pocket on the front. It has a hood. And it's just snuggling up. And I thought, that should be fairly quick to sew. It only has, you have the front, back, the sleeves, and the hood pattern pieces. That's it. So it's quick in terms of construction. Um, yeah, and I think that's something he will use, you know, around the house, I think. Um, so that's one thing I'm going to make. For my mother, I I help out with her Christmas stocking every year. So my dad, he my mum loves trinkets like I do. I feel the same way. I like the stocking is my favourite part. I like getting lots of little bits. Um, and my mum does as well. And my dad just doesn't really get it. Doesn't really get it. Nathan doesn't really get it either. Don't know if it's a woman thing. No idea. But um, so I help my dad out. I'm his little elf, as mum says, every year. And he gives me a budget and then I go and find things like cute little things to put in her stocking. Um, and I'm going to do that this year. But also I saw this really nice looking tutorial for oven mitts. And I just thought that would be a fun thing to make. I've not made them before, but it looks really quick. Um, so again, it was a tutorial on um, Instagram. It does not require a pattern. And so I've ordered a couple of like crafting cottons from Jenny Stitches which are I only ordered today so they obviously haven't arrived yet um and I just need to get hold of the right kind of wadding 
um, because obviously you don't want people burning their hands. But so I'm going to make those. I'm hoping that'll be quite a quick crafty project. Um, and then otherwise it's just sewing for kids. So I don't sew for all of the kids, I know, because it's just a lot. But I do tend to, I've got three godchildren now and I sew for them quite a bit. And I brought this cotton jersey. I'm just going to grab it, actually. So it's this cotton jersey, which um, I purchased at First Fabrics when I was up north. It's a Stoff of Denmark jersey, so it's really good quality. Um, and it's got this sort of... Oh, I don't know if that's supposed to be there. It's got this gorgeous like sun and moon print on it. Now I purchased it because I thought the print was so pretty, but these are 100% not my colours. They wash me out, okay? I can't wear pastel pinks like this. And I initially thought I was going to make myself some pyjamas, but it's been sitting there and I've been thinking, do you really need pyjamas in that fabric? Like it just doesn't suit me. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to use that I might make little PJs for my goddaughters or I might make little dresses. Don't know, I think it's got the moon on, it makes me think PJs. But I don't have a great stretch PJ pattern for kids. Um, yeah, so I'm on the lookout for the patterns, but that's the fabric I'm planning on using. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm planning on sewing for Christmas. And then aside from that, I'll sew whatever I can find time for for myself. Um, I'm really busy next two weeks and then things get a lot quieter actually over Christmas itself. Uh, so I'm hoping that I'm going to have loads of time to cut out projects and sew things up and just do a bit of, um, it's, it's quite a, I think everyone's feeling quite stressed at the moment, aren't they? It's feeling like the world's feeling quite heavy and, um, yeah, there's just like a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So, um, for me personally, I just am quite looking forward to having some time to just sew in a relaxed way rather than in a manic way and have a think about what I want to be focusing on for next year. Um, so the last thing I wanted to show to you was my advent calendar. Now, I last year I didn't get a sewing advent calendar. This year I have the Fabric Godmother advent calendar. Now hear me out on this. I know it's really expensive, don't get me wrong. Um, I had planned this year to get the Lush Advent Calendar, which is really expensive. And I'd put aside money through the year so that I could get it. Um, and my thought process behind it, I mean, I love, I love Lush. I love Lush. Who doesn't love Lush? Um, but we were supposed to be having our first Christmas in our finished house, which included a new bathroom. And long story short, in our old house, there was like a big damp problem. And the bathroom was like not done very well. And there was like a slug incident when we first moved in. And I'm someone who loves a bath. And basically since we moved into our new house, I've just like not really enjoyed it because I didn't like the bathroom. And because of the slug, the slugs crawling out from under the bath just sort of put me off. So we're having everything ripped out at the moment. They found the source of the um, damp problem. So they found this pipe that had burst. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but... Yeah, we're moving where the bathroom is. It'll all be brand new. Um, and I thought I'd, we'd be in there for Christmas, but we're definitely not going to be. So save that for next year. Um, but because the Lush calendar was so pricey, um, the Fabric Godmother calendar actually seemed fairly reasonable in comparison to that. So um, I decided this is the year I was going to go for it. And I'm going to be honest, I've quite enjoyed it so far. I mean, it's difficult because I think in an advent calendar, every single door is not going to be a winner. And it's quite like £120 is a big investment. They did have some money off it for their, um, what's it called, for Black Friday, which I think is worth keeping in mind for next year. It's not loads of money off it, but it's just like, if you can save, you may as well, right? So um, I thought I'd just talk you through what I've had each day. I'll try and put a timestamp in here. So if you don't want to know, you just skip past this bit, although this will be the last part of the video. So oh i've remembered another thing i had to talk to you about hold on to that thought after this i have one other thing to talk to you about right so it's not quite the end of the video okay so the first day they gave us this couturier hand cream called seams now i was not thrilled although i'm sure it's very lovely and i think i mean i don't know what makes it for a couturier i guess this is it dries quickly, so I guess you can put it on and then not worry about it getting on the stuff you're working on. Um, and it says it's for hard working hands, so it absorbs instantly. It's for hard working hands, box, 
very pretty. Um, but I was just a bit like, oh, I wanted like something sewy on the first day. Um, and it's interesting because I remember last year thinking the first day wasn't the strongest day when I was watching other people's. Um, and I think you want to put something like BAM in on the first day. You know what I mean? Because then people are more likely to see it and go, oh, maybe I should see if there are any left over and buy one. Anyway, so this is this hand cream. I have not taken it out of the box yet, but I will. Very pretty. And I'm sure it is lovely. Luckily, the second day I absolutely loved. So it's these buttons. I don't know how well you can see these. They're like little stars. And they're embellished and they have um, a little pearl in the middle. Um, I think they're super gorgeous. There are six of them. So you can make a nice cardigan or have them on part of a dress or... And this is something where I've not seen these buttons elsewhere. Do you know what I mean? They seem something quite special. They're quite festive. I don't think I'll get anything made up in them this Christmas because they are quite sort of wintry Christmassy, I think. But they will go in the stash and I'm 100% going to use them in something next year. Um, like people, I saw people talking about cardigans and stuff like that. But I was even thinking, you know, a dress with buttons down the back or something like that. Could be super cute. But I love that. That was day two. Um, day three was a pack of love hearts and a £10 voucher, Fabric Godmother, which is great because I spend too much money a fabric on mother so save myself 10 pounds amazing um i did want to buy there's this uh you know the narita hansen range that's everywhere now so it's really interesting reading i read an email from narita hansen the other day and they've changed their business model so that now um they can send their designs to factories on different continents for them to print there because obviously the fabric's been so expensive here because of the import costs um, and when you're not having to import as far, it makes it a lot cheaper. So, um, which I think is great. And I initially wanted to buy all of it. And then luckily I talked myself out of it because I just don't have the spare money at the moment, to be honest. So, oh, what's going on with my hair? Oh, sorry. Um, I just don't have the spare money at the moment. So I talked myself out of buying loads. And the one that I kept coming back to was this giant gingham print. And they have it in three different colours. And the colourway I liked was like a pink and a... It was like pink and burgundy and orange or something. And I kept putting it in my basket, taking it away, putting it in my basket, taking it away. Um, and then it sold out. And then it came in stock somewhere else. And then it sold out before I could get any. So that's pretty sad. But I'm hoping that might come back in and I can use my £10 voucher. Fingers crossed, everybody. If you see that anywhere, let me know. Um, then day four was this. Now, what is it, you may ask? Um, it is from a brand called Sewing Gem, which I have ne not heard of before. Handmade sewing tools and haberdashery, and then various details about them. And it is a little like a needle minder. And it's very, so it screws like this. And it's just, it's handmade. It's very pretty. I mean, I've never thought of even needing one of these, but it's now that I've got one, it's amazing. Um, so again, that's something that I would never have bought for myself, but I think you can tell it's really good quality and I think it'll be something really useful also when I'm you know quite often I go up north and I'll take projects with me and having something like that is going to be really I have like magnet things but this I think will be even more helpful so that was day four day five not my fave day five was some bias binding it's lurex gold bias binding now the reason this isn't my favorite is because I actually already have this I bought some of this ages ago like when I first started sewing and I've I bought it for a specific project, which was the By Hand London Hand Address. And the fit was absolutely dreadful on me. Um, I had no understanding of grading between sizes or cup sizes or whatever. So I made it for my bust measurement and it was just huge around the neckline. Um, so I bought this for that and then I never used it on anything else. So I already have a load of this. Now I have some more, but I guess that means I've got to come up with something to do with it. So... I'm wondering if I'm doing more like, you know, like making the oven gloves, if I'm making more like little gifts and things, maybe there's more of a use for it there. Don't know. Right, the sixth. I love these labels. Now, Fabric Godmother, every now and again, do their own labels. And this, oh, this was the gift today. So you get two labels, in these different colours. And they say, I don't know if you can see that. They say, sweater weather. 
sweater weather. So, um, and then they've got this cute little, it's like a fair isle print. I don't know how to make that focus. Is it going to focus? Not having it? I'll take over my face. Focus on this. No, the camera's not going to do it. It says sweater weather and then it's got a little fair isle um, pattern. And so that's green with pink and white. And then this one is pink with green and white. And I think they are really cute, to be fair. Really nice little labels. And on the back, they say fabric of mother. Um, I think they had ones at labels last year, like exclusive ones for the um, calendar. I don't know if they then go on to sale, sell them. You'd think they would. Um, but yeah, really sweet, nice colours. And then the seventh, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know what this is, um, but <laughs> I think maybe it's like a, a bag charm. A key ring? I don't know. But it's so it's from a brand called Kate Blandford. And it's this little I don't know what it is, but oh hang on, it's moving a lot. It says it's like plastic acrylic or something. And it says fabric only. And it's on this little chain. Now I think is it like a charm, like you put it on your little bag, hang off your bag or something. Um like maybe if you have a bag that's for your fabric. You might like put your little fabric only label on it. I don't know. I have no idea what it is, but it's kind of cute. Um, and again, what I think has been great with this calendar is so far, apart from the bias binding, which is something I already had, like I have a lot of sewing stuff. And aside from the bias binding, nothing else in here is something that I've got already, which I think is good. It's difficult to do that, isn't it? Because you're selling to people who have an interest and who buy things related to this hobby and finding things that they don't already have but that they like and are usable is really great. Um, so I thought I would open today's box with you. So it's day number eight. Let's see. It's a big one. Ooh. What is this? Ooh. Cellulose head pins. Oh, the little tulip pins. Okay, first of all, how adorable is this box? Can we just have a minute for this little box? It looks like a tiny little house. Um, that is super cute. Now, how do I get into it? Do I unpair this thing? So it says on it. Oh gosh, I don't think we're. Oh, there we go. We're out. Oh no, we're not out. This is interesting viewing, isn't it? Watching me try to work out how to untie a knot. Okay, right, that's out. My gosh. Oh, ooh. So it says on here cellulose head, cellulose head pins, tulip thin. Oh my gosh, this is like a challenge itself. How do you get into this box? I don't want to rip it because the box is so pretty. It might go in the bottom way. Right, and then when you open it up, oh, these are really cute. Okay, it's in a little, like a test tube, and the it's pins thin pins and they look kind of long or maybe they're just and they've got oh this is so cute they have little tulips on them oh my god that is so sweet oh my gosh i've not seen those before just little oh my gosh i'm throwing them across the room i can't have nice things so how many are in there two four six eight ten twelve fourteen i think maybe sixteen or eighteen or something Including the one that I just threw across the room, which is there we go. Um, that is really cute. So it's a little pin set. So that's day number eight. So again, obviously, I have pins. Do I have tulip head pins? No, I do not. Do I have a little test tube? I do now. So um, yeah, great. So yeah, I think the thing is with um this advent calendar, it's an investment, right? Not gonna lie to you, it's an investment. Um. Will I be getting it every year? Probably not. Uh, but I think it's one of those where if I have the money, I might get it. And if I don't, then I won't. Um, but I do think the gifts are... I mean, I've been watching someone was at the Prim Advent calendar and like the first day was just plain safety pins. And I was like, you can buy safety pins from a shop for like a pound. Do you know what I mean? 50p, whatever. Um, so with this, these are things that I, as I've said, apart from the bias tape, but most people probably don't have Lurex Gold Bias Tape. I just, you know, gold to neutral. We've already discussed this. Um, but I am, I'm really enjoying it. I'm not regretting spending the money. Um, but I also appreciate it's like, 
you could spend £120 on the fabric that you really want. So if I hadn't put money aside for an advent calendar already, I wouldn't have bought this. So I suppose it's worth, if, if I did decide I wanted one for next year, I probably again will start putting money aside throughout the year. Um, because it's like, what, £10 a month to buy this? Um, the Lush one is more expensive. So if you think you might want one, like, it's not the worst thing to just, if you can afford to do it, like, put some money aside each month. Um, so I think I'll see. If I have the money there, I might do it again. Uh, I'll see what else it's got to offer. But I am really enjoying it. And it's been like a bit of a meh time recently. And it's quite nice to just get a gift every day, isn't it? Um capitalism that's capitalism for you uh yeah so the thing i forgot to tell you about was um i had this velvet uh fabric that minerva gave me it is a matte velvet in a sort of peacock teal petrol color and i wanted to make the sew over it portia with it but it turned up and it's not stretchy enough so i've been trying to work out what else to do um and i was maybe going to make the peony dress but i've just been thinking this is a very festive special occasion peony. Do I need another festive special occasion peony right now? And I've decided that I don't. Um, so I'm going to make a blazer. Now, I've been looking around to find the perfect blazer pattern for what I want. And the, the only blazer I've made before was the Heather Blazer by Friday Pattern Company. Um, and it was a bit boxy for me. It looked like I was from Miami Vice. Probably not helped by the fabric I chose, which was pink and and very bright um but I yeah it just didn't suit me I don't think the the shape of it um and then some of the other patterns I found are a bit too they're like too fitted so they look a bit too like businessy which again is not what I want I don't have to wear clothes like that to work so um I'm looking for if you look at what's about right now in the shops there are a lot of these velvet suits where you have a sort of slightly relaxed fit um blazer like longer line maybe with a waist tie or something. Some of them are double-breasted, but double-breasted does not suit me. Um, yeah, and so I've settled on the Kai blazer, which is from Fibre Mood, um, and I ordered it, and I'm actually quite excited to sew that up. So I've booked, uh, I've booked, I've bought the pattern, I've ordered the A0 print from Jenny Stitches, my number one A0 print place. Um, and that's going to be another project. Um, again, it's a bit more involved. It's more tailored. Um, but that is, yeah, another thing that I want to work on sooner rather than later. Um, and that just reminds me, the thing I wanted to finish on was any of you who have been here for a while will know that last year I made, last Christmas or just before, I made... The Vivian Coat, which is a sew over it um, pattern from their ebook Vintage Dreaming. It was involved. It was a big project. There were over 100 steps in the instructions um, and it's a properly tailored coat. Um, but I love my coat. I love it. I wear it a lot. It feels very fancy. Um, it was made in this beautiful boiled wool in a colour called Sangria, um, which that fabric was given to me by Minerva. Um, and anyway, I did this photo shoot for Sew Over It back in March and it was to shoot some of their new patterns and they said to me, can you please bring your Vivian coat because we'd love to get some proper pictures of it. Um, because obviously it's a very, you know, making loads of samples of that would be super time consuming. So I've already got one. It's plus size as well, which I'm not sure if they had examples. I think they maybe did have one example of it on plus size person. but um, And the photos, they posted them yesterday. So I'll pop a couple of them up here. Um, the only thing I have to change about this coat is the buttons I purchased were originally from Liberty and they're just not quite heavy duty enough for the wool. So they kept coming off. So I need to switch the buttons out for something else, um, but it needs to fit the buttonholes. So that's another a job for another day, as they say. But yeah, that's it for this week. Um, next week, I have carol services coming out of my ears. So um I don't know how much sewing I'll be doing before next Friday, but if I have anything to tell you, then I will be back. Um, and then after that, things are a lot quieter, so you'll be sick of the sight of me, probably. Um, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. The light's also gone super weird on this dress now. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well and that you're enjoying all of these amazing videos that are going out at the moment and having a nice, cosy, Christmassy time. Um, lots of love, and I'll see you next time. Bye!